50 years ago today, President Nixon landed in Beijing for the historic week-long trip that effectively ended the United States' long isolation from the People's Republic of China. He settled into the Chinese state guesthouse, where each day he scribbled down notes for a series of meetings with Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai. Taiwan equals Vietnam equals trade-off, Nixon wrote at one point, outlining his thinking. Taiwan's status is determined, one China, Taiwan is part of China. We won't support Taiwan independence. For decades, all that was known about Nixon's opening to China in February 1972 was a sanitized version based largely on the memoirs of the former president and, particularly, Henry Kissinger, his national security advisor. Even high school students are familiar with the heroic narrative, only Nixon, the inveterate anti-communist, could have gone to China. Nixon and Kissinger skillfully played the China card against the Soviet Union. And the two men merely brought you as policy in line with reality when they bypassed claims that Chiang Kai-shek's nationalists, exiled on Taiwan, represented the rightful government of China. There are elements of truth in the tale, but it leaves out a lot. For example, on the only Nixon argument, Democratic Senators Mike Mansfield and Ted Kennedy had also been seeking to go to Beijing, Nixon and Kissinger asked the Chinese not to let them in. On the China card, it can be argued that in reality Beijing played an American card against the Soviet Union, which had been skirmishing with China along their shared border. And then there is Taiwan. In the carefully fudged Nixon-Kissinger formulation, the two Americans gave away little as regards the island, only the fictitious claims of Xiong and the nationalists. In reality, they gave quite a bit more. Indeed, in today's ongoing tensions between the U and China over Taiwan, we are all living with the consequences of the framework they constructed 50 years ago. As Georgetown University diplomatic historian Nancy Byrne Cook Tucker concluded when transcripts of the talks were declassified, Nixon and Kissinger wanted so intensely to realize their goal that they surrendered more than was necessary to achieve it, and the price was paid, not in the near term by T. The president and his national security advisor viewed Taiwan as expendable. What Nixon and Kissinger hoped to get from China was help in ending the Vietnam War, that is, help in persuading North Vietnam to make a peace settlement. <laughs>